Brianna was a beautiful girl inside and out. Brianna was amazing at everything that she did. She was very gifted, loved life, lived life with um, so much enthusiasm and always carrying her big smile. St. Marcus Police are investigating two recent homicides. Officers were dispatched to a neighborhood off of Staples Road Sunday morning after receiving reports of gunfire. Upon arrival, they found Brianna Landrum with a gunshot to the head and she later died. Flaca is a girl who is beautiful from the inside out. She's gorgeous and elegant. She's friendly to everyone and always there to help someone with a problem. She smiles all the time and everyone loves to be around her. She's also very smart and funny. She knows when to be serious and when to let loose. Flaca is simply amazing. So they wheel us into the room and I'm standing behind Mary. They put the petition up between us and, and what's happening and I have no desire to see how they do a C-section. And uh, the doctor lifted her up, and I said, oh, snap, Mary, it's a girl. <laughs> and I didn't say snap. And Mary was like, what? <laughs> it's a girl. Those were the first words my daughter heard. And then the doctor, yeah, it is, it's a girl. I, mean, I couldn't believe it. I was just overwhelmed with love, uh, overwhelmed with, it's almost until you become a mom you don't realize that there's this gap. And she came in and filled that gap and made me whole in a very weird way. And so now that she's gone, she filled that gap and that gap is still there, but now it's there in a different way. She listened, she was a good kid. When that, when that girl was in, was five, six years old, it wasn't six o'clock, we were getting her up at 5.30 and 5.15. But I, I never, ever had to go in her twice. I would walk into her room and I'd say, okay, baby, get up. It's time to get ready for school. And the next time I saw her, she had her clothes on because Mary would set everything out the night before. And uh, she'd just come in and then sometimes we'd sit on the bed. watch cartoons. But she always got up. So we never had a <clears throat> never had to tell her again. There was hardly ever any drama about her. Uh, about the only drama with her that I can ever remember is don't have her play outside to where she would sweat. She didn't like that. And don't starve her. <laughs> as long as you were constantly feeding that girl, then Brianna was just a, a, a happy, um, happy person. But uh, she was just very true to herself. One of the most outgoing, happy people. Uh, I could probably count on one hand how many times I saw her down and out, you know, about something in life. And, and she uh, was never one to, uh, to dwell on it. She wouldn't, she wouldn't wallow in it. She would, you know, something would take her down, maybe catch her off guard a little bit. And within 24 hours or so, maybe 36 hours, she'd pull herself right back out of it and she'd, she'd move on. It was kind of like she had that attitude of, I ain't got time for, for sadness and, and, and whatnot. She was just um, a good kid, uh, and um, uh, she had her faults, but aside from that, um, you know, she was easy to talk to, easy to um, work with, easy to do projects with. Um, Brianna didn't know a bad, uh, having a bad day. From the time that we heard of her passing um, through the day of the service, we underwent, as you can imagine, very dark, dark days. And days that I, um, I, I don't know how I went to bed and how I woke up. The day of the service, as I started seeing the outpouring of each people coming in, 
it was an incredible peace that came over me. The one true promise we got from God was that he would never test us with anything we can't handle. We believe that. So we, uh, we're going to handle it. The amount of support and love was, was, it was huge. It really was. It was, uh, uh, the next morning, Friday morning we woke up was the, we didn't feel good, but it was the immensely the best we had felt in four, four or five days. There was a lot of weight had come off of us that we, um, really were just kind of putting up with. We weren't really acknowledging it. It switched the course that our, I guess, path, it, the path that it was headed into. And we chose not to be in darkness. Um, we chose that to be our strength, to be the, the pillars, the, 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 you know, our, our faith, our family, our friends, to be the pillars that hold us together and help us through every single day. You, you, want, your, you want your kids to be loved in the world. You want the world to, to be, you know, aware of them, I guess. And she did it. It speaks volumes of the person that she was. Um, it's not just me as her mother standing here saying that she was a good kid. It's uh, she had an impact. And so Brianna was put on this earth for a reason. She figured out what that was and she did what was expected of her. And um, we are just very blessed to have um, been given the opportunity to, to, to parent her and to guide her through her 24 years. We're definitely a family church. We're a church of a lot of generations, you know, grandparents and parents and grandkids. We, we, that's, we have a lot of that. And they were definitely one of the families. So her grandfather was, was on staff at this church for decades. He was an associate pastor here. Um, so she's been a child of the church for, you know, a, a long time, right? Ever since she was a baby, she grew up here. And she, so for a lot of people, um, this was, I mean, they, they've known her, they've seen her grow up, they, you know, saw her you know, through the awkward teenage years and up into, you know, becoming an adult. So for many people, there, there was, you know, she was their, their kid of sorts. You know, there was a, a definite connection. Brianna became like our adult daughter. Mm -hmm. It was not uncommon for her to stay Friday night when we'd get home. Most people would be ready to go home and get back to their own life. But she would stay and have dinner with us, hang mm -hmm. out, joke around. Um, we encouraged her to, to apply for grad school. We just spent a lot of time with her, and she yeah. became like our adult child. I mean, her, her dad used to joke that he was going to make Bernie start paying for some of her college education because we were, we were spending so much time with her and considered her like our, uh, one of our children. Yeah, She was the fifth member of our family. Yes. So I was the summer intern at the church in 2015, and um, Brianna wanted the internship. I didn't even meet her that summer. I don't think I talked to her one time. Um, so I got hired and I came on random person had never been to this church before. And, um, she like, didn't like me because I got the internship over her. And then, um, a whole year later they were hiring for an admin position and, um, they reached out to me and asked me if I wanted the job. So they didn't really put it out there for anybody. And so when I came on the Sunday, my first Sunday, I came on stage and they introduced me and she was actually talking to Jordan and she was like, I bet it's that girl. And there I was. And um, so she also wanted the admin position and they hired me. So she didn't like me um, at first. But um, then we did finally hire her. She got the job and um, we, yeah, just connected so well. She really came into a void. We had a lot of need, but not a lot of direction. So it wasn't like your traditional internship where it's like, hey, come and learn. It was like, hey, come and do, you know, come and kind of work and learn on the job as you, as you go. And, and so that's what she did. Um, so for, for, a number of months, it was, it was me and her and Jessica. There was just three of us, and, and we, did, we did everything together. She was really passionate about what she was passionate about. So, um, you know, her education, focusing on kids, wanting to, um, to have a daycare and all these different things. It was such an interesting passion to me to want to own a daycare because it just seems like a lot of work and, um, like, not something that I would ever want to do. So getting to hear her talk about it, it was just so interesting. Her vision, her dream was right to start 
uh, a free child care for, on Saturdays for mothers, and that was, that was huge. She bought into the idea that, that people needed to know that they were loved and cared for. Um, and so that was really the vision behind that, is, is letting the community know that they, there was somebody other than, there was somebody that didn't have to love them, somebody that didn't have to care that, that cared. Um, and that was a really cool thing. And the hope was, was eventually that that would morph into, that would turn into a, a full scale, larger um, kind of child care, daycare center. And, and she started working towards that while she was here as well. Um, really what she meant was she was a, that constant in the nursery. She was that, that person who, who loved their kids, who greeted them, who, who made them feel safe. I mean, a big part of, of, of uh, you know, a part of what we do is people come and, and parents drop their kids off. And, and, and you, can't, you can't undervalue uh, feeling good about where you're dropping your kids off, right? And she was, you know, that constant, that, that, that consistent, smiling face, welcoming who you knew you could trust your kids with, who you knew that you could, you could exhale for an hour and know that they were in good hands. Yeah, Rihanna was a very special person. She um, was a big part of our life. Like Jordan said, we never had to worry um, at all about the kids when, when Brianna was caring for them. She knew exactly what to do. Um, she was teaching them all types of, of things. She was even teaching this little one Spanish, mm -hmm. right? So no, she was she was a, a, a you know a, a great impact on our life, and even though she's gone um, from this world, you know her her spirit still remains, and so she'll be with us for for the rest of our lives. When we became friends in 2017, I desperately needed her. I didn't have um, any close girlfriends, and she was there every day. I mean, we worked together, <laughs> so getting to have that friend who was there every single day got me through 2017. Um, and it was just, I mean, God literally provided her when I, when I desperately needed a friend. She definitely left a hole. Uh, she definitely left a hole in the church. I mean, she, I, mean, I think I learned how to, my experience leading, at least from a senior minister level, you know, she was kind of... I came on and, and we brought her on right after, so she was kind of my first, second hire, actually. Um, so she got to be, I mean, her and Jessica got to be my, she got to be kind of my, my test case, right? Um, so I feel like we, we grew a lot together, I mean, honestly. And, and I think uh, she was gracious and, and, and asked good questions and, and um, and I think it was, you know, kind of the whole iron sharpening iron. You know, she was, she was good, and it made everybody around her good, better. I'll catch you then. If you're going to be hanging out there, I'll catch you when I'm going. Probably about the end of May, beginning of June, is when we reached out to Texas State University, to various um, faculty members, um, President Trost to get guidance as to where we could go to initiate a scholarship in Brianna's name. They quickly put us in touch with the right people and it started moving rather quickly. What the university presented to us was an endowed scholarship. They had given us four years to raise $25,000, uh, the $25,000 being the mark to make it endowed. They also suggested that, that a crowdfunding page be set up and that would allow family and friends to go through that side and donate in Brianna's name. Once that page was launched, we couldn't believe that within two weeks we reached $25,000. I mean, friends and family really came through and it is just something we completely did not think we were gonna, we were gonna do. I think it speaks to the fact that the community wants a way to heal and, a, and something that we want to all kind of find a positive light towards. And this is a way for us to find action and to find a way to continue to honor Brianna, but also to, to have something positive come out of it. Um, so it's giving a lot of people, not just um, Brett and Mary, but it's giving a lot of us that possibility to feel like we have action and um, an agency to create healing in the community. At the end of the day, 100% of the funds, it's all gonna go to the university and the funds are gonna be used to award, whether it's one scholarship or multiple scholarships to students that attend the family 
um, in consumer science um, program, uh, which is, that's important to us because that's where Brianna received both her bachelor's and master's degrees um, from. The, so at the two week time frame, we decided, well, I guess let's double it. <laughs> Why not? And let's see if, uh, if we can raise the $50,000. The official fifty thousand dollars that, like the larger endowment, um, will be administered next fall. So we will have um, applications and review processes um, occurring in the spring for um, the official awards happening in fall. Probably over time, this will become a, a thing. Probably once or twice a year, we're going to do a fundraiser for this thing until we get it to that hundred thousand. So. Uh, <laughs> It's not over yet, but um, we were just very pleased with the reaction from the friends, community, and we're not uh, unbelievable. I, can, I still can't believe we hit 50,000. She had a huge impact on life, everyone around her. <laughs> she had a huge impact in her community, with the school, her job, her friends, her family, and church. And it's evident because no one gives you money just that way. And the fact that it was done in such a short period of time, we didn't have to promote it. We didn't have to get on the phone. We didn't have to ask for money. It just happened. Seeing Brianna's passions honored and extended to other students feels in many ways healing and it helps to see that her legacy continues on further. Just knowing how it will support students um, helps us find a positive outcome from the events that transpired. And I know that many students will benefit from this program and from this endowment. What we're hoping for is that it, whoever the recipients of those scholarships are, that perhaps as they pursue their dreams, as they pursue their goals, that somehow they will take a little bit of Brianna with them. And in doing so, that's how her legacy will continue. And so for us, I think it makes us very happy knowing that um, Brianna's memory will carry on for forever. Even when Britt and I pass away, that legacy will continue. And we have done our part to honor her. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. We thank you for Brianna. We thank you for bringing her into our lives and helping us become the people that we are today. We ask that you give her a hug and a kiss for us. Tell her we'll see her soon. In your son's name we pray. Amen. In one, two, three, four. Shot, shot.